A biblical perspective on life, culture and current events. This is 2020 on Vision. Well, on a Monday, we like to check in with the Australian Christian Lobby and Ashlyn Vice is ACL State Director for South Australia and she joins us now. Ashlyn, welcome. Thank you, Andrew. Great to be here. A lot going on, Ashlyn, especially with this Babies Born Alive issue. It's just a tragedy. What's next? Yeah, that's right. So a couple of weeks ago now, Senator Ralph Babette issued an urgency motion to recognise and condemn the fact that an average of one baby per week is born alive after a failed abortion. And we currently have no national law to protect these babies, that is to require uh, nurses and doctors to provide them life-sustaining treatment. Um, So what we see is in South Australia and New South Wales, there are some protections for these babies and some requirements for them to be administered proper care. But in every other state and territory, um, there aren't such protections. And we know, for example, in the Northern Territory, in their termination of pregnancy guidelines, doctors are specifically instructed not to provide these babies life-sustaining care. What's really shocking about that is some of these babies can survive for up to five hours with a heartbeat um, and are absolute can be absolutely uh, neglected, which is really, really devastating. Um, so yes, as I said, on Queensland and Victorian health data reports, which are the only states that do report on this issue properly, we, we think that's an average of one baby per week. Uh, it was, I guess, um, both encouraging to see the 18 senators that did vote for the motion, um, but there were 32 that voted against and 26 who were absent. So uh, to me, just watching that debate, Andrew, I um, it always blows my mind to think that people would actually vote against something like that. Um, but uh, we're thankful for uh, the issue being made more public. I, for one, am praying that this will mean that uh, more public voices are raised on this issue and something will change. There's, um, You asked what's next. Well, there is a live bill before the Senate at the moment sponsored by Antique and Senator Matt Canavan to uh, enforce national guidelines to protect um, these babies. Now, I don't know when um, they'll get enough support for that, just looking at the numbers from the urgency motion the other week. Um, But what's next, I think, will really be to make this issue an election issue. Uh, More likely there'll be um, an election early next year rather than late this year, as we were sort of conjecturing, I know, a while ago that maybe there'd be an early election. But we're just going to keep this issue on the front of the public conscience, the public mind, um, let everyone know where senators stand on this topic and hopefully um, hopefully we'll get some senators to actually lose their seats over their opposition to this uh, to this bill. One of those senators is Senator Maria Kovacic from the Liberal Party who delivered a really shocking speech against the motion. And I know uh, Dr Joanna Howe has a specific campaign to try and um, get her to yeah, lose her seat after the yeah the the terrible opposition that she had to these precious lives uh, receiving care. Is it true that someone in the government even even said that there's no evidence that babies are being born alive? Did I see that in the media? Articles released that um, I I mean I don't really like the term misinformation, but I would say they were spreading misinformation. Um, in framing the issue as a women, woman's rights issue and totally misrepre- misrepresenting our current laws, there was a Guardian article by uh, Tori Shepherd that claimed or, or t- referred to every single baby that's born alive after failed abortions as an unviable fetus. Oh. Now, that completely disregards the fact that in Australia, Babies can be aborted for absolutely any reason, so it doesn't mean that they were unviable pregnancies. In many, many, uh, in most cases, um, Andrew, they're they're healthy pregnancies and healthy babies that could have lived. Um, And uh, what's more, I mean, once they are born, uh, they are babies, regardless of your views on on abortion and the development of the fetus in the womb. Um, So... That was really disappointing to see. There was also a bit of misrepresentation around um, the stories like um, Jessica Jane, the, the baby that was famously born alive, left to die in the Northern Territory and uh, had a coroner's inquest into her case. Um, so 
Yeah, look, I think uh, it's an inconvenient fact that some babies do survive abortions and the abortion lobby uh, wants to hide that under the carpet and say that, you know, they're talking about reducing women's rights. Um, but really, this, I mean, even people who are pro-choice, Andrew, surely can agree that once a baby's born, they deserve care. Yeah, I mean, what's the term? An unviable fetus. Just yeah, awful, awful. And it just shows what an immoral society that we're living in now. If ever Christians need uh, evidence or a sign of the fact of how dark our society has become, that a, a newborn baby, and anyone who's seen a newborn baby just knows it's a miracle of life, that that can be described as an unviable fetus. It's something you'd expect from Nazi Germany in World War II. Yeah, that's right. I think we often forget history and often forget um, the way that, like you said, uh, evil campaigns against against um, people groups um, were justified. It often starts with the changing of language and dehumanising the people that they're targeting. Um, so this is really, really devastating to see. Um, but I think my, my prayer is that the average Australian's conscious conscience on this issue would tell them that this is wrong, uh, and it really uh, it it really uncovers, I think, the true colours of the abortion movement. Um, if what they are concerned about is is women's rights, um, but they're happily allowing young baby girls um, to to not receive the, the palliative care um, that that they deserve and, and the the nurturing that, that a baby needs, even if it is suffering or especially if it's suffering, uh, it's just heartbreaking, isn't it? It is. So what's ACL's response to this? How are you going to make this an election issue? So what we tend to do around uh, federal elections is deliver our school cards on local MPs, and that's just about um, – making transparent what people's local MPs and, and the Senate candidates in their area have voted on in relation to our key issues. And the pro-life issue has always been um, one of our top issues, if not our top issue, um, because it's really, it is really a life and death issue. Um, and so it's, it's about raising awareness about what each candidate has done. Something I would really encourage people to do is, is to uh, have a look at where um, senators in their state voted on um, on this urgency motion, and we'll be uh, putting that information out there from now up until the election. Um, I also expect we'll have that information on our scorecards. Um, we can't tell people who to vote for and what to vote against, but uh, we can inform people where they stand. And um, what's really positive, I think, about what Senator uh, Ralph Babette did the other week is um, he forced people's views to be made known on this. So it's not a secret now um, whether or not they're willing to support um, the, the value of human life. Um, so that's, yeah, going to be a huge campaign point for us. Yeah, so if people go to the ACL website, they'll actually be able to see each senator's position on this and then vote according to their conscience. That is a great initiative by ACL. That's right, yes. So by all means, check out our website and keep your ears tuned for, uh, I guess, more coming from us when it comes leading up to the election. Uh, and we're going to be trying, follow, trying to follow up uh, those senators which weren't there on the day as well. Okay, well, let's move on to one other issue. And there's a new development in South Australia. Tell me about that. Yes, so uh, last week, Andrew... Uh, an upper house member in South Australia, Robert Sims, introduced a motion to remove protections for religious schools and institutions that currently allow uh, currently allow those schools and those institutions to legitimately discriminate in their hiring practices based on their religious convictions. So what that means in practice is a Christian school can genuinely require um, a prospective employee to adhere and hold to their religious ethos on sexuality and gender, uh, traditional views on marriage. You know, these are all topics that are now uh, 
actually being discussed in schools and actually becoming of relevance. And so I think it's, it, I mean, we know it's really important for Christian schools to have confidence that the people they're taking on board and their staff are not going to undermine the beliefs of that school and the beliefs of the parents who have chosen to send uh, their young children to that school. So if this sounds familiar to you, that's because uh, a very similar proposal has been discussed this year at the federal level. The Australian Law Reform Commission released a report at the beginning of this year recommending that federal protections um, for Christian schools and institutions uh, be removed. And basically uh, that religious uh, institutions will could be bullied or forced uh, into hiring absolutely anyone. Um, now, there was a lot of pushback uh, across the country on this issue, and so the uh, Labor government hasn't gone ahead with that, at, at least not yet, and they, they won't before the election. Um, so the Greens in South Australia have taken it upon themselves to try and do this at a state level. Uh, realistically, Andrew, I think um, this is a way for them to agitate the relationship between left and right members of Labor in South Australia. We are a bit more of a conservative Labor government here. In fact, we're the only, uh, we're the, historically at least, we've been the only state in uh, Australia where the Labor government has been a bit more conservative than the Liberals. We don't know um, what they'll look like with the new uh, leader, Vincent Tarsier, in the South Australian Liberals. And, uh, of course, David Spears was bringing, bringing the Liberals back to a little bit more of uh, their traditional roots in the, the centre-right. Um, but... Yeah, we, we'll certainly be campaigning against this. And we know there's, there's a lot of support here for Christian schools to still have um, that ability to self-determine um, and to operate like genuinely in accordance with their religious ethos. Yeah, well, for the sake of personal freedoms and also religious freedoms, you hope that this campaign doesn't get off the ground. But Ashlyn Vice from the Australian Christian Lobby, the State Director for South Australia, I want to thank you so much for joining us on 2020 Today. Thanks, Andrew. Thanks for taking time to listen to this audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. To find out more about us, go to vision.org.au.